All right, guys, Mr. Antonucci here, and I'm back at you with question number four from the 2021 AP Calculus AB exam from Administration 1. They released the questions at the time of this recording. They had not yet released the solutions or the points breakdown of how to grade it, but I'm going to show you uh, the solutions that I'm pretty confident are correct, and I'm going to even give some opinion as to what I think some of the points breakdown might be. Again, I don't know for sure, but I've been teaching calculus for over 15 years. I've seen dozens and dozens of graded AP exam questions, so I have a fairly good idea um, of how they would uh, assign the points to this. So hope this is helpful to you, and um, let's jump in. So for number four, we have a graph here. One thing that is extremely important is that you take special note of what graph you're given. This is the graph of F. I always have students that look at the graph, read the question, and don't realize that sometimes the question is asking about the derivative and they give you the graph of the original, or they're asking about the original and they give you the graph of the derivative or second derivative or any combination of those things. Or as in this case, they're redefining a function in terms of other things. So we just have to be super careful. Um, so let's read it. Let f be a continuous function defined on the closed interval negative four to six. The graph of f consisting of four line segments is shown above. Let g be the function g of x equals the definite integral from zero to x of f of t dt. So this is important. g is defined as the definite integral of f starting at zero. So let's jump in. On what open intervals is G concave up? Give a re reason for your answer. So for part A here, concave up would imply that two ways you could think of this, that the derivative of G is increasing or the second derivative of G is positive. What do we have here? Well, we know that G prime equals F. F is um, increasing on um, negative four to negative two, because from here to here, that function is increasing, and two to six. So, um, because G prime is increasing So two things, you have to not only have the correct intervals, but have the correct justification. And you can't just say it is increasing there. And it wouldn't even be sufficient, probably, to say that F is increasing there alone. You have to show this relationship to how G relates to F. So G prime is equivalent to F because G is the integral of F. G prime would be F. And so... Uh, since F is increasing, G prime is increasing there. You have to show that link. You can't uh, not show that link. Okay, let's look at B. Um, let P be the function defined by P of X equals G of X times F of X, find P prime of three. Okay, so P prime, you have to use the product rule. So that would be G prime of X, F of X plus G of X, f prime of x. Now, I don't know how you were taught the product rule, but in general, as long as you have the derivative of one function times the other plus the flip-flop of that, you're good. Since it's addition and multiplication, there's several different permutations of how we could combine those. But as long as you have the derivative of one times the original of the other plus the flip-flop of that, you'd be good. So they usually give a point for the expression for the derivative. And then plugging in three, you would have G prime of three, F of three, plus G of three, F prime of three. Um, G prime of three is equal to F of three. So F of three is three. And then that's times three, so you have three. Uh, G of three is equal to the integral from zero to three of F of T dt. Now from zero to three, um, it would be this region minus this region and this region. So you would have uh, one half, one times four 
minus one half, one times four. Now those two are gonna cancel out because they're the same amount. Um, plus one half, and this last region right here is just a trapezoid of height one on its side, base of four plus base of three. And that's actually going to be subtracted because it's below the x axis. Okay, so you would get negative seven fourths um, for that one there. Okay, so, or excuse me, negative seven halves. Doop -doop -doop. And then this should be f prime of three. Okay, so we'll get that. So this seven halves will be negative. And then f prime of three is the slope of this graph right here at three. And you can see the rise over run. Be careful of the units, they each go by one, so we're good, is over one, or excuse me, up one, over one, so f prime of three would be the slope there, that would be one. So you would have nine minus seven halves, which would be 11 halves. So this would be 18 halves minus seven halves is 11 halves, or you could put that as 5.5, either way. We're good there. Okay, part C, we wanna find the limit as x approaches two of g of x over x squared minus two x. Okay, I just copied it down. So as x approaches two, g of x, uh, g of two, we tried direct substitution first, is the definite integral from zero to two of f of t dt. And from zero to two, you have equivalent regions, one above, one below, they're both rectangle triangles. So that's gonna be equal to zero. And then when you plug in zero to the denominator here, you would get zero. Since g of x is continuous and x squared minus two x is continuous, we can do uh, L'Hopital's rule. I'm just gonna abbreviate L hops. So that'd be the limit as x approaches two of g prime of x over uh, 2x minus 2. So that's going to be g prime of 2 over uh, 2 times 2 would be 4, minus 2 is 2. And g prime of 2 is negative 4, according to the graph, because g prime, remember, is f. So f of 2 is negative 4 divided by the 2 we give you negative two. So I'm guessing they give you about maybe two points for this, one for using L'Hopital's rule and one for getting the final answer. All right, so part D, find the average rate of change of G on the interval negative four to two. Does the mean value theorem guarantee a value of C for which G prime of C is equal to the average rate of change justify your answer? So we wanna get the average rate of change for G the average rate of change is, it's gonna be g of two minus g of negative four all over two minus negative four. Now we already got g of two from the previous problem. It's the integral from zero to two. This region cancels this region, so we get zero. The denominator two minus negative four is six and then minus g of negative four. So to get g of negative four, we have to do the definite integral from zero to negative four, okay, of f of t dt. But notice the upper limit is less than the lower limit. And since g is defined as the, the definite integral of f from zero, when you go to negative four, you're integrating backwards. So you can flip the limits, zero or negative four to zero. And this is important because you'll get the wrong answer if you don't remember this. And you take the opposite. Remember when you flip the limits, 
you take the opposite um, of that value. So you get the area of this entire region and you'll end up with negative 16. Okay, so that's g of negative four. And all you have to do is break it up into trapezoids or rectangles and triangles and things like that, however you decide to do it. So you would get uh, zero minus negative 16. So that's 16 sixth, which is eight thirds. Okay, so that would be the average value. Um, and also we have to answer the rest of the question. Basically, does the mean value theorem apply? The answer is yes, because G itself is differentiable and continuous. Remember, even though this graph has points where the derivative of this graph would be undefined, remember the mean value theorem says if a function is continuous and differentiable on that interval, then there will be a value of C on that interval such that the function, the derivative is equal to the average value. G is continuous and differentiable. Here's how you know. Also, G is the integral of F. So G prime is equal to F and G prime or F is continuous. And remember, continuity implies or differentiability implies continuity. So in other words, since G is differentiable, G itself must be a continuous function. Therefore, it satisfies the conditions of the mean value theorem. Notice that the question didn't tell you you had to figure out the value of C, okay? So once you explain that justification in a quick sentence or two, you'd be done with that problem. All right, guys, hope that was helpful for you with question number four. Make sure you check out the other videos as I go over the other five questions from administration one from the 2021 AP Calculus AB uh, exam free response questions. As always, make sure you hit that uh, subscribe button and click the bell for notifications so you know when new videos are uploaded. All right, guys, make it a great day.